Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Zach from Motocrane, and today is an exciting day if you are a Ronin 2 owner or operator because we are introducing the world's first and only third-party power source solution for the Ronin 2, as well as the Ronin 4D and even the Inspire 2. So let's first talk about what unifies or the common denominator between those three products from DJI, which is the TB50 battery. Uh, which was introduced in 2014 by DJI for the Inspire 2 launch and for all intents and purposes, a fantastic battery. This is a 98 watt hour 6S or 24 volt LiPo battery um, under 100 watt hour, so it's flight safe, um, loved by many and integrated in many other third party accessories by great companies like Ignite Digi. But as we know, the success of the Ronin 2 has been its use in applications outside of handheld gimbal operation. Applications like cranes, tripods, arm car, um, black arm or camera car, studio, tripod, on the dolly. And in all of those applications where you're not so concerned about holding batteries handheld, um, you want to be running on larger power sources for endurance and duration and not having to change batteries out so frequently. The one Achilles heel of the TB50 battery ecosystem, um, especially for the Ronin 2, is that you cannot power the Ronin 2 off of a third-party power source. There is a digital handshake that happens between the TB50 and the Ronin 2 that prevents that. So the good news is at Motocrane, we've been studying this digital handshake between the TB50 battery and the Ronin 2 for years, and we finally created a solution. And that is the Revolt, which is very, very similar in form factor to a TB50 battery. You see that familiar connector on the front, but on the back side here, you have a common three pin XLR connector, status indicator, and then a discrete on off switch for your Revolt. And operation is really simple with Revolt. You just install it just like you would a TB50. And then you have this three pin XLR that you now can provide power to. So for quick demonstration, I'm just gonna use a Cine VCLX and a common three pin XLR. Plug my three pin XLR into my block battery. Can turn that on. And then provide power to the Revolt module. Now, as soon as Revolt sees that it's connected to power, the status indicator is going to show a white strobing uh, standby mode. And that just means that it sees that power is connected, but the Ronin 2 is still turned off. So to turn the Ronin 2 on, you just press and hold on off on the Revolt. And you'll see the status indicator go from white to green. And from this point forward, the LED now functions as voltage monitoring. So on this block battery, I'm able to monitor the capacity of the remaining life of this battery. But if I were to connect, be connected to something that didn't have that display, I can actually look to the Revolt and see if I'm at green, yellow, or red, potentially needing a change. Now, another great feature about the Revolt is that you can still use a TB50 uh, in order to hot swap. So let's say that in the middle of the shoot, uh, my Cine VCLX needed to be changed out after many hours of operation. I could simply turn this off and you see that the block battery is now dead, Revolt is off, but the gimbal is still on. So I could plug a new Cine VCLX back in, turn the Revolt back on, and we're now live. So it integrates seamlessly with the existing TB50 ecosystem. Uh, and again, it's designed to be very simple to use. There's no app, there's no settings, it's plug and play. Another exciting aspect of this launch is the high discharge three pin XLR power supplies that we're also launching, the AC3 and the DC3. And these further open up the power solutions available for the Ronin 2 and can also be used for anything needing a high discharge three pin XLR power supply. So um, flight heads, Scorpio heads, anything that needs three pin XLR can also be powered with the AC3 and the DC3. So let's get into uh, what these power supplies are and how they work with this ecosystem. This is the AC3, which is used for providing three pin XLR power from any kind of alternating current voltage. Uh, and operation of this is very simple. You have a AC input on one side, an on off switch, and then your common three pin XLR output on the other side. So let's fire this up 
and see how this would be used. The AC3 includes this IEC C13 cable, which is the same AC power supply cable that's gonna be included in a bunch of different uh, AC power supply accessories. We're just gonna plug this into an extension cord or a stinger, as we call it on film sets, of course, and then into our AC input. Now, obviously we're here in the States, we operate on 120 volts, but the AC3 is actually built for voltages from 100 to 240. So you can run this in Europe pretty much on any AC power grid. Uh, this is gonna operate with the correct input cable. So now with this, I have my three pin XLR that's ready to go and I treat it just like I would that block battery. I'm gonna plug this in. Turn it on. Got a green LED there telling me I'm ready to roll and then provide power to the Revolt. We'll see that I get that same standby white strobing on the Revolt. I can turn it on. So this would be excellent in applications where you're gonna be running in a studio and you know potentially for hours on end and you have house power, shore power, whatever you wanna call it, um, wall power that you could run everything on and not have to be dealing with batteries at all. Now, similar to the AC3, this is the DC3, which is identical in size, but you'll see that this front interface panel is a bit different. The DC3 is built for applications that have more common DC voltages natively, like 12 volts in a vehicle, or for our Motocrane customers, having 48 volts available um, that you can run through accessory power. So in order to demonstrate how you can use the DC3 effectively uh, for powering the Ronin 2 from a voltage that isn't 24 volts, like what's on the block battery, we're gonna go take a look at Jake's car and his black arm setup to see how we can integrate this to basically get rid of TB50s or needing the TB50s for a long day of shooting on the road. So here's a common application for the Ronin 2. We're mounted to a black arm on some speed rail and hanging off the rear tow hook of a tracking vehicle about to go chase some cars. And in this scenario, we're probably gonna be changing out our TB50s every couple of hours, depending on how much we have powered from the gimbal itself. What we're not utilizing is the abundance of power that's available from the car via its own 12 volt battery. Let's use the DC3 and the Revolt ecosystem to hardwire the Ronin 2 to the vehicle's own 12 volt battery for unlimited power for our shooting day. We're gonna start by wiring our ring terminal, the four pin XLR cable to the car's own battery and then plug in our dual four pin XLRs to the DC3. Then connect your three pin XLR cable to the output of the DC3, and then mount the Revolt into the TB50 battery sled and plug it in. So we have the DC3 hooked up to the vehicle's 12 volt battery, and that's gonna be providing us with a high discharge, continuous 24 volts power source that we have plugged into the Revolt on the Ronin 2's battery sled. So now we can shoot all day without having to worry about changing out TB50 batteries. We can even keep a TB50 in the battery sled in the event that we need to turn the vehicle off and go to the TB50 um, or change out or uh, move over to a different vehicle even um, without having to kill camera for our whole shoot day. Now let's take a look at how the DC3 is used with Motocrane Ultra and Motocrane Radical, where you already have 48 volts inside the vehicle powering the arm that you wanna also use for powering the Ronin 2 through your accessory power ports. The Ronin 2 is the most popular stabilized head used with any of our remote arm systems, including Radical and Ultra. And now with Revolt, owners of those systems can take advantage of the accessory power ports that exist on their PSU for providing power up to the Ronin 2 off of their MotoBat 48 volt battery. So we're gonna walk through how that DC3 integration works with the Radical and Ultra PSU. Start by using our 48 volt splitter cable to plug your MotoBat into both system power as well as the 48 volt input on the DC3. Make sure that your DC3 input is set to 48 volts. Now use our accessory power to three pin XLR cable set to plug your DC3 into your PSU. Use the remaining three pin XLR cable set to plug into the accessory power port on your base pedestal. 
And now with that, you have 3-pin XLR running through your accessory power port of your arm, and you can now just use a standard 3-pin XLR cable to run down the length of your arm to the Revolt module installed on the Ronin 2. So now in this configuration, we have our 48-volt Moto Bat providing power to our arm, as well as our gimbal and all of the connected camera and accessories. So instead of having your whole unit run off of multiple power sources, you're running everything off of a single 48 volts power source. Now with the DC3, we could have also just as easily connected that to the 12 volt battery of the vehicle and run all of our head and camera power off of that instead of uh, drawing off of our 48 volts battery. So depending on your use case, your application, your preference, um, sensitivity to travel, with lithium or not, um, there's going to be different, you know, best options depending on your use case. And the nice thing about the DC3, the AC3, and then also the Revolt module is that you have that versatility and flexibility to uh, alter your configuration based on the exact use case. Another popular application for the Ronin 2 is going to be on a jib or a crane, maybe for a studio application like this or live event coverage. And in most cases, the R2 is going to be running for a long period of time and you may not have access or a convenient time to stop and change out batteries. So let's take a look at how the Revolt and the AC3 in this application benefit a longer performance where you don't have the opportunity to stop and change out batteries. So you can see up on the Ronin 2, we have the Revolt module installed and we have a 3-pin XLR cable run down this IntelliJib here. And then we have our AC3 power supply uh, mounted to the base of the IntelliJib, uh, just running from 120 volts through a stinger to the wall here in the studio. So to connect it and get everything powered up, we're just going to take our 3-pin XLR and plug that into the output of the AC3 and then take the other end and plug it into our Revolt. And again, once we connect power to the Revolt, we're going to get our standby status indicator and then we can power up. Now with this power solution, we can run all day without having to change out batteries. And because we have a TB50 installed as well in the battery sled, even in the event that we needed to, say, repatch to a different AC circuit in the studio, we could just power down the AC3. The Ronin 2 is going to go over to the TB50 for providing power. And then once we're ready and repatched to another circuit, turn the AC3 back on and suddenly we have our infinite power again. So another popular application for the Ronin 2 is going to be on a doorway dolly or a peewee or even a rickshaw like what we have here. And in most of those scenarios, you're going to have power on board the dolly or the rickshaw that you can now use to power the R2. So because most of those onboard power sources are already going to have 3-pin XLR, it's super easy to set up. I'm just going to plug in my 3-pin XLR to the block battery and then to the Revolt module, then power everything up and I'll be good to go. So power is now coming from the block battery itself. I do have a TB50 on board in case I want to hot swap or change out that block battery maybe many hours into the shoot, and we're all ready to start rolling. So we've looked at how the Revolt ecosystem totally changes the game for how you're delivering power to the Ronin 2 and offers lots of different options based on your exact use case. If you have questions about your Ronin 2 or how best to provide power to it for your application, make sure you get in touch. We'd love to come up with creative solutions to make sure that you're performing at your highest level. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Again, I'm Zach from Motocrane. Hope to talk to you soon.